Terry. Bill. Yes, Linda. It's oh. just not for board members. We want our whole club to come to the yeah. assembly. So please, please consider it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I get it last year. It was so it's fun. at the Finley Center. It's in Santa Rosa this year. Yeah. It's, that's like, great. Usually we go up to Fortuna. Okay, anyone else want to chew in the genie's time? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got nothing to do. He's happy. <laughs> um, if you've been in this town longer than uh, 38 years, 40 years, you know Gene Nelson, you bet Gene Nelson. If you've been in this town for two years, you don't, because he retired two years ago and had to go on a <clears throat> kind of a two-year church-imposed sabbatical where he couldn't talk to anybody. Anyway, Gene was a pastor for, he was a pastor for 38 years. Uh, before his retirement from the Sebastopol Community Church, uh, he was the longest tenured pastor in the town of Sebastopol. The closest had been Dave Stolman, who was the Lutheran minister, and Dave retired a number of years ago. So Gene was just kind of the grand old man out there, uh, inspiring us. <clears throat> At the Senior Center of the Year, we honored Joe Gazowitz, one of our items with a group recommitment ceremony. And when we put the whole thing together, it was, oh, we'll have the supervisor, Carrillo, perform the ceremony because they just got the, the ability to do that. And then suddenly Efren tragically went away to camp, and we didn't know where camp was, so he wasn't around. Last minute we called Gene, and Gene was gracious, stepped in, did a wonderful job, and we had a real wide variety of, of folks that had been married and, and or together for years. So anyway, Gene did a wonderful job, and we've asked him to do today is to speak a little bit about his experiences in those 38 years of marrying people. And um, at the end, I said a little note out late last night, if anyone has an interview pass about their marriage, we'd love to hear that too. But Gene, it's all yours. All right, let's welcome Gene. How do you do, one speaker? How do you do? Is there anything that we can do for you? Thanks for coming here today. We are with you all the way. How do you do, modern speaker? How do you do? Oh, oh. I got something to follow that. Is that on? You yeah. go. <laughs> that was quite a day that Terry talked about. That's one of the advantages of getting older. Please can you use your mic. It's on. Try he has it. it. He's got a clip on it. It just wouldn't turn up. Right, my off. Not yet. Yeah, you see it? Are we good? Yes. yes. All right. A little more. Yeah, one of the advantages of age, if there is one, is Terry um, called me for that service. I don't know, last second. When I was thinking it would have been 20 years earlier, I would have probably just fainted dead away. <laughs> Come out and talk to maybe you know, for you. How many people were there about, about Probably marriage? 25 couples. Yeah, it was a very moving day. I reminded me of, uh, I went back to Chicago. Gene, will you louder on the mic? Hello? Yeah, I need a battery. Yeah. We just All got right. a new battery. Which one is there? Turn on. Turn on. Turn here. All the way back We'll turn it off now. I'm glad I could kill your sound system today. There we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back together. <laughs> <laughs> this is at a wedding, so it reminded me I went. I had uh, a dear aunt died in Chicago, the oldest member of our family, and I went back. Uh, my dad was not in great health, and so I went as our representative from the West. And, I got back there and I went, got off the plane immediately went to the funeral home where all the family was and I'm standing there with them and I say, um, and the service was the next morning, I said, well, now is a chaplain or someone going to come and do this service for you? And they looked me in the eyes and says, oh, no, no, we planned for you to do it. <laughs> so I, I got back to where I was staying, which was with a, um, our daughter-in-law's uncle. Walked in and said, Anybody got a computer? <laughs> one hour to put together a funeral service. But again, the advantages of age. I just want to make one announcement myself. Um, after probably one or ten too many glasses of wine one night, I volunteered to serve on the 5130 District Planning District Conference Planning Committee for this year with Bob Rogers. 
And so I just want to put in a quick plug, May 18th to 20th at the Lionsgate Hotel in Sacramento. Uh, we are planning our district conference, and it's going to be more interactive this year. We're going to have ideation sessions, hands-on, where we can actually have a chance to build cans, or go press study cans for people, or to pack food packets. And so we want it to be more of an idea-challenging session as opposed to, let's look back and say what a good job we did in the last rotary year. It's going to be very exciting. It's a beautiful spot, and you can have a chance to use a flight simulator at the Aerospace Museum on a Friday night. So I just want to put it out there where we'll, if God is kind, maybe by this time next week, yeah, you'll have be able to register online. I'm working on that even as I speak. But May 18th to 20th in Sacramento, Lionsgate Hotel, which used to be the McClellan Air Force Base. And they've turned it into a hotel and conference center. So hope to see many of you for that. Um, yeah, Terry asked me just to share some, I don't know that great here guy is. Uh, did they ask me to... Uh, to share some thoughts on, on, on um, weddings that I've had. And if there's time, I might even ask a couple of you if you have any thoughts about your own wedding today. Um, but um, you know, thinking about marriage, I think there was some comedian who said the uh, wedding ring is a gold band that cuts off your circulation. And, uh, <clears throat> or another one uh, said when things were going bad, he'd like to go downstairs and run the video of his wedding backwards, and he walked away a free man. <laughs> However, another view. <laughs> Get a prenuptial. Yeah. <laughs> From uh, George Eliot. What greater thing is there for two human souls than to feel they are joined together to strengthen each other in all labor? To minister to each other in all sorrow, to share with each other in all gladness, to be one with each other in the silent, unspoken memories. And um, I suppose that's why we, the church, have stayed in the wedding and marriage business all these years, um, because there is something powerful that actually and some actually stating to someone, you know, that I, you're the one I choose to be with in life, for better or for worse. I've, I often used to ask couples, since these days, about 99% have been living together, you know. So when you're married on Saturday, when you wake up on Sunday, will anything be different? And it's kind of, oh, 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 oh. but um, I've always been convinced it is different. I mean, that to actually state that is, is a significant thing, you know, to kind of give an outward expression of this invisible love which unites people's hearts. And that is, that is something very special and, from my point of view, something sacred. And it's a, a very powerful thing and a, and a life, needless to say, a life the changing thing to be a part of. But interesting things happen uh, with weddings. Um, a lot of weddings these days are outside. And I can remember, um, I actually went to the Desto for a wedding. It was uh, Tom and Pat Dilly's son, Russ, and his fiance, Sherry, some of you may know the Dillies. And we were going to be, the wedding was going to be at her parents' house in the Desto, and they had this huge backyard, a big piece of property. Um, interestingly, her dad had got to like the double A level in the St. Louis Cardinals. And he had a room just full of mem Cardinals memorabilia, you know, autographs from Stan Musial and others. It was hard to tear myself away and actually get back to the wedding. But we'd set up a, like a little stage in the corner of the yard, and that's where the service was going to be, so we were going to have a little rehearsal out there. Well, the neighbor next door also had a huge piece of property and a whole lot of feathered friends lived on that property. And so geese, ducks, turkeys, it would be quite a, quite a menagerie. So we lined up in the corner, and um, we're just kind of practicing coming in and a few things that I might say and they would say. And the, all those uh, birds seemed to take a real interest in what we were doing, and they came over to the corner. They, maybe they thought we were going to feed them. And so after a while, it, it went kind of like this. I, I said to them, Okay, so um, Russ, tomorrow I say I'll say, do you Russ take Sherry and from across the fence? Go, 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 go. 
Sherry, do you take Russ? Hong, 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 hong. And I pronounce you husband and quack, 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 quack. I said, well, this is going to be fun. Uh, so Bert invited us to the wedding, and I, I knew, I looked one lucky Tom Dilly, and I knew tomorrow those birds are going to get fed some grain that they've never had before. <laughs> Well, those things happened. It's interesting. It didn't start to pour rain, of course, and so the whole service ended up downtown Modesto at some place, but we never got to, to test the birds. Oh. And then we had a wedding up at uh, Ocean Song. I think it's still Ocean Song and up above Occidental. That's a popular spot. Uh, and I've had two or three weddings. There's a hill you climb up to and you have the wedding right on top of the hill there. I guess this was in early July. There was a family in our church, Jim and uh, Chris Jenkins and their daughter Sarah getting married. And everything went fine in rehearsal the day of the wedding, and everything's going smoothly. And we're all just rolling along. We're getting close to the, to the end of the service. And I don't know what it is about it, but again, we're right about at the vows. And I say, okay, um, repeat after me. I, Sarah, take you. Boom! What was that? Okay. To be my wedded. Boom! What? And so for the entire vows, it was like they were attacked. I mean, it's like things were shaking. And and you know, so finally, and I'm not kidding. It was like, okay, I now pronounce you husband and. We later turned out that that Saturday afternoon was the Civil War reenactment in Duncansville. <laughs> and so our wedding was accompanied by the Battle of Gettysburg. And uh, we learned that there in the hills along the coast, sound could really travel. Yeah. <laughs> and Gail was reminding me too of uh, her daughter Catherine and Jean's wedding. And the Jean's family is Jewish. And of course, Catherine came uh, from our church. And the day of the rehearsal, uh, first of all, the rabbi couldn't be there. And so this was interesting. Our Protestant Catherine had researched this and was walking the Jewish family through this service. And it dawned on us that the Jewish family had never been to a Jewish wedding. <laughs> And so, so Catherine is, is the rabbi, and, and we're putting, trying to combine these two traditions, and it was very interesting. But then the next day, Saturday, the rabbi shows up, and about five minutes before the wedding, basically changes everything we were going to do anyway. <laughs> and so I just kind of stood there for the rest of the day and just kind of watched. <laughs> One of the few times people actually found me speechless. Um, I was once told also that, um, you know, when you do a wedding, you know, public, there's nothing more fun than public speaking. Make sure you write things down because it's easy to stand up in front of people and completely forget whatever you're going to do. And this story didn't happen to me, but a, another minister was telling me he had um, a big wedding in the East. It was for a member of the New York Jets. And so, you know, there were a lot of the whole team was there, a lot of well-known people came to this wedding. And he said he always liked, after the vows, and right toward the end of the service, he always liked to do the Lord's Prayer. And so he said, I'm standing up here, you know, and there's all these people, and, and I said, okay, let's, uh, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. And he did, he said, I'm going completely blank. <laughs> he said, I finally had to turn to the bride and groom and say, uh, could you kind of help me? What are the first words? <laughs> Our father. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. <laughs> I don't know. Thank God that's never going to happen to me until um, I had uh, a wedding in Arizona. My brother in law got married. He got married to my sister, sadly. She died of cancer, and they had two children, Joanne and Grace. And he asked me to come for it. He met this young woman, Michelle, and they decided to get married. So I was really happy. Our whole family went over for this wedding in Prescott, Arizona. And as part of the wedding, I just wanted to say a few words about you know, all that we've been through. It was so nice, Charlie and Michelle, to 
invite me here. And I looked at my two nieces and said, it's so nice to be here with Joanna and I can remember Grace's name to save my life. And finally, sort of, finally, her dad says, Gracie, her name's Gracie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. And I, you know, almost any family together now, I'm reminded of that day. They're, they're gentle with me. But, um, and I, uh, also, of course, the community church never had uh, air conditioning. And so he was always interested in at weddings. And, um, I, you know, it never happened to bridesmaids, but there were two weddings that, uh, where I would, had rooms, the wedding was over, and the organ started to play. And this one guy took one step and went right down. Boom! And he was dead away. And then another one got about halfway down and fainted right into the lap of the husband uh, of the bride. Right down. We never lost the bride, but one, I remember one wedding I had was just incredibly hot. And um, before the wedding, the groom said, you know, my, my uncle's actually a minister that he would like to say a few words. Well, nothing strikes terror into the heart of a minister or a relative saying, I have something you would like to speak at the wedding. And he, uh, and so the uncle gets up. And it must have been 115 degrees in Central Creek Church. And starts saying a few words, a few words which really turned into a full 15 minute sermon. Oh. And so at one point, I'm looking at the bride, and she is whiter than her dress. Oh. And so I ask her, Would you like to sit down? She says, Oh, yeah, please. So she sits down, but the uncle took no notice and basically finished his sermon that day. And afterwards, several church members who knew me, not that I'm a control freak, congratulated me on not strangling him right there in front of him, or at least beating him to death with the pulpit Bible. That, uh... And we had, and I remember another one, that was John Burns and Jane. We were outside some, somewhere here, and it was really so, so hot. And it's two o'clock, there's no father with the bride. 2.30, no father of the bride. 3 o'clock, no father of the bride. Well, I had a rule, which was loosely enforced. I used to tell people, please, please uh, try not to start the reception before the wedding. <laughs> you know, I had just had too many tipsy groomsmen and everybody else. Well, it's now an hour late. It's like 195 degrees out there, and I'm, I'm wearing a suit. We got the bride all dressed up and everything, and so I finally looked at the groom and said, okay, let's tap the cake. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so, and the first one in line was me. <laughs> and Dad did show up, and I do believe somewhere in the haze that I got through the service, but um, one of the few times I violated my own rule. Uh, but also, we never lost, we had occasions where brides would you know, start crying, you know, when they were nervous. But we actually never lost one. But I, I remember another wedding at the church. Um, it was time to go, and generally I would meet the groom, and sometimes the grooms would back behind the church, and we'd walk in, and then, and then the procession would start. And I always asked the best man to kind of keep an eye on the groom, you know. <laughs> well, it's 2 o'clock, and I'd all go back there, and suddenly we realized everybody's there except the groom. Couldn't find him anywhere. Searched the church, searched all the grounds. Where is the group? You don't want to tell the bride. Let's not tell the bride. Um, and we finally found him in the parking lot, sound asleep in the front seat of the car. I, so, uh, keeping an eye on rooms. And of course, rings. Uh, I can't tell you how many times rings have been dropped and rolled places where you could not find them. Uh, I ended up. Uh, buying two little cheap gold rings to use just in case. And more than once I actually handed the bride my ring so she could put it on the group's finger because you're, you're up there so many best man says, oops. Um, and children in weddings have always been fun. Uh, I, I would try to ask couples, you know, how old is the flower girl or the, uh, or the ring, bearer. ring bearer? Thank you, yes. And uh, because 
lots of things happen uh, and because they're cute until they aren't. Um, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it will come down. You know, they'll come down the halfway down the aisle, panic and run away. I've had ring bearers with the rings get about halfway down and then take off. You know. Uh, or they'll start crying. Did you find them at the pawn shop, though? Yeah, yeah, there you go. And, uh, but we had, uh, and then, once they're down there, a lot of interesting things, things happen. After a while, often just, you would have um, flower girls kind of get tired and start lifting up their dress. <laughs> or a couple times, I actually had flower girls decide to take off their dress. It was hot. And, uh, <laughs> I've had flower girls and ring bearers start pushing and shoving each other. <laughs> I've had them, uh, or get up and finally just completely lose patience, you know, and suddenly I realize I'm doing a wedding and I have a little child behind me running around. And what happens, of course, is where I'm standing, you can see the eyes of the entire congregation, they leave the bride and groom and start following me. Right. <laughs> Where do they want to go? And of course, in these days, we're you know, you have people getting married you know, for a second wedding, and I've had, um, like, a little, particularly a flower girl who's the bride's daughter, you know, and I'd ask the bride and groom to kind of go steps in the church for the, their vows, and suddenly you have this girl clinging to mom, you know, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. <laughs> but then, of course, both, I can't tell you how many times we've had flower girls in, um, uh, Bring bearers, um, you know, right, you say, let us pray. I have to go potty! <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes thought maybe we should just put a porta potty right in the corner of the church there so they can. That happened a number of times. Um, then, uh, we, I guess the other thing that at least always struck terror into me, Mr. Control Issues, is. Someone will say, um, well, my mother's cousin is a singer, and we'd really like her to sing at the service. And some of them were quite good. Some of them. <laughs> but you just never know. And why is it that the worst singers always want to sing Ave Maria <laughs> at a snail's pace? <laughs> and you know you're in trouble when the piano player or the organist hits the note and the singer is ah, 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 and away we go and ten minutes later you know, every feeling in your mouth hurts but one good one was um, this was at my church in Pennsylvania we had um, these you go up some steps to get into the church and one day it was we had a soloist and me and the groom and the groomsman. And she was wearing, I don't know if we had spandex, kind of a spandex top and a long dress. And so it's time, and why she was with us, I don't know, I think maybe she was gonna sing the processional for the bridesmaids. <laughs> so I reach around her and I open the door so she can go into the church to start singing. Well, she takes one step and steps on her dress. <laughs> And she pulls it down. One of the great wardrobe malfunctions of all history is she not only entertained the congregation, but for the groomsmen, it was the best darn wedding you'd ever gone to. And uh, so, um, yikes. I'll put time goes by. I am. Um, well, I, I asked uh, Terry and Sue. You just wanted to say a word about your wedding day. Sure. Um, 18. 18? 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. We're not as old as you. She had to be 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we remember that day because that was the day that uh, the singer Jim Croce was killed in an airplane crash. And so whenever we want to remember what day we met, we can go look that date up and act like we're really romantic. And, and we remember all that stuff. I married in Sacramento. Um, 
met almost directly from getting married to living in Las Vegas for nine years, so we joked that we had a nine-year honeymoon <clears throat> in Las Vegas and left there with a perfect two kids, two cars, two marriages, two mortgages. So it, it was what one, one, one marriage. <laughs> But the the wedding the wedding um, afternoon after the reception was time to get away. We were in her folks' house in Sacramento trying to get out of there and finally got in the car because we hadn't eaten and someone gets really crappy when she doesn't eat, so we ended up at McDonald's. Her. Only, her. Big, big, only her. And we ended up at McDonald's in Sacramento. But no one else remembers what I, the other thing I experienced that night, because my mother-in-law was very good about saying this only to me. She came up to me and looked at me and said, don't screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> and so far, so good. I've tried. But so far, so good. So we're up um, on our, I say, 41st, yeah, 41, 41 years, going on 42 in October. And um, 73 is when we met. Oh, oh. Politician. Got married in '76. But anyway, it's been wonderful and um, a great experience. And it was in a bowling. The reception was in a bowling alley. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing because when you said that, because uh, we were married in Phoenix and we're going to a hotel, and that's I don't know what it is. We stopped at Burger King <laughs> <laughs> the, day, the night of our wedding. We stopped at Burger King and got a hamburger. Oh. Betty was a star, so I can't want to got him. She hadn't eaten at all. You know? <laughs> so, just a couple of things. Um, the, um, um, one, I, I can remember I was asked to do a wedding in Sacramento, a uh, family of church and their daughter. I guess maybe in the diplomatic court, met in Nigeria. And uh, so I went to the wedding and, and the, re the rehearsal dinner. All these young Nigerian men were there, and then an older woman came in who was, I guess, maybe a matriarch in the family. And, and, and right after dinner, I've never seen this before, she was seated, and like these eight groups, these eight young Nigerians came up, each one kneeled down and took her hand, and when they kissed her hand, and kind of basically asked her for a blessing. Every, I've never seen it. All, one after they all kneeled down, just honoring her, this 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 matriarch in their in their family. And the, the last thing is, uh, uh, I'm supposed to kiss the The we had Daryl Finley was our church keyboardist for a number of years, and he and his partner Alvin just kind of dropped out of the sky at our church, and Daryl was. One, we needed an organist a keyboard. He told me, I, well, I play a little piano. He played a lot of piano. He actually had accompanied Pearl Bailey, and he was a marvelous musician, really changed <laughs> our worship service. But just a transforming event. He and, he and his partner, Alvin, decided uh, they'd like to be married in the church. And our, we'd never had a gay couple get married in the church. And, Actually, the community church we kind of had a checkered history in his relationship with gays and lesbians. But, but Daryl and Alvin, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you can have a stereotype, you can actually see a face. And people have really fallen in love with them. And so when they decided to get married, it was interesting. One day my secretary says, you know what? I'm telling people that we have full, so many people were calling to help with that wedding that we had no room for any more volunteers. And the day of the wedding, you know, they had their friends and family there, and the church was just packed. It was unbelievable. And uh, it was funny because Alvin was so reserved. Here's Daryl's a piano player. Actually, but I think he came running down the side aisle and just changed everything upside down. It was an incredible celebration, the first gay wedding we'd ever had. And when they took those vows, it was like there wasn't a dry, dry eye in the house. And I realized that when you think about love and marriage, not only can a loving relationship transform our individual lives, but in the community church, a loving relationship quite literally transformed the life of an entire community. And so that's kind of the power and the glory of what we celebrate today. So thank you very much. So, we're going to ask you.
pick the winning ticket. But first, I wanted to let you know that you still got it because Larry went around and did a collection, and uh, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you still got it. You know, you don't even have to ask anymore. It's so hard to start, start, yeah, so hard to stand in front of a group of people and not ask for money. Yeah. <laughs> so if you just go to grab one of the. Uh, Eight three five eight. Blue tickets. Yep. Eight three five eight. And the number is eight three five seven. Oh! oh! I got it on either side of it. Damn. Who has that? 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 Our door prize today is from Lori and Kaswika. So, Bruce gets to give Helene four Valentine's Day. Oh, or his girlfriend. So, there's that. And then we have... Push. card, didn't go. Get it, Bruce. Looking for the ace of spades here. Get it! Oh, so close! So close! And we have a joke of the day. Bob Keeser. Actually, it was rather difficult to come up with a joke. For, for her uh, Valentine's Day, but here it is. An older woman walked into her friend at the mall. You're not going to believe this, she said. I found an old lamp the other day. I rubbed it and the genie popped out. She explained that genies don't give three wishes anymore, but he did offer me a choice of between one of two wishes. He could either give me a better memory or turn my husband into the world's greatest lover. Tough choice, said her friend. Which one did you choose? That's the thing, I can't remember. 